So it's been a while since I've recorded for this show, and um, yeah, I go through these periods. These um, I go through these real personal lows, and I'm trying. I'm trying to like recognize a pattern throughout the the last year or two where so I can I kind of predict when these lows will come on and I knew that uh, around the time of my birthday or September that I would feel this way Um, because I felt this way last year and um, yeah sometimes I feel this way and, and, and even before Rachel died but I try to think about, my grief is, I think it, if you lose somebody, and you, your life is happy before, and you have some uh, peace with what you're doing, maybe your job, maybe you really enjoy your job, or uh, financially you're stable, things like that, then grief is easier to deal with. And um, I don't. I'm not saying it's any less painful, but it, it can be easier to. It can be easier to to not fall into despair if you have these other things that are working in your life. And for me, I don't. I don't have those things. Um, it was easy for me to take a year and a half off to take care of Rachel, and I don't regret it. I would do it again. Um, but it was basically, a, you know, I, I, I wasn't happy in my career, my job, my choices. I wasn't making enough money and I don't like, exa- like what I do. And, um, yeah, I was kind of lost. So taking care of Rachel gave me some direction and some purpose in my life and, the only thing I do regret is I wish that I had had made better choices, um, so that not only now that it would be easier to deal with grief, but also, um, I would have been able to give Rachel more, and we might have gotten married sooner, and I might have been able to give her some of the things I know she wanted, a house and, um, a wedding and all those things, even though we were on the verge of starting to to think about those things, um, so now my life, it's not so much grief, I mean, it is the grief, but, you know, grief, there is ways to handle it, handle it, and, um, it's more about my position in life, and so, um, because of that, and because I've, have this crisis of meaning and purpose in my life and direction, um, you know, I romanticize about the taking care of Rachel, and, uh, that time becomes so much more important to me, because, um, you know, I long to be, feel that important again to someone, to something, and, um, so that's what I wrestle with now, and, you know, I think there's a yearning, and there's a yearning to see that person, uh, clearly, the obvious, you miss them, and, you know, you long for them, you long to talk to them, but I, I have that, I have that yearning, and I also have another, uh, deep desire to express what happened, because I feel like, you know, it was the most important thing that had ever happened in my life, it was the most profound thing, the most, it was the hardest struggle, and it was the most real experience in my life, and I felt very present, even though there were times where I know I was disconnected, and I wish that I was more connected during those times, there were also times I felt very, very present, um, yeah, so, now I just have this desire to talk about it. I don't know if it's because 
I don't know how, how things work like that. I don't know if soldiers, when they come back from war, desire to talk about it. I think they do. I think they do, and I'm sure that I'm sure they do. A lot of them do. You know, they'll write a book or t- they'll tell those, their story, maybe go on tour or something and talk to people about what they went through. But many of them don't do that. And I think, I think, um, I'm not, listen, I'm not comparing what happened to what it's like to be in battle. I I mean, I can't imagine that losing some, losing people close to you so quickly, um, and being forced to, to move, to move on immediately, um, and continue immediately is really, I don't think they offer soldiers much, much time to grieve. I, I don't think they really don't at all, you're too busy fighting, um, but, uh, you know, I guess I felt like I was, I know I wasn't at my best, we weren't sleeping, and the whole thing creates trauma in your brain, and you, and you find ways to deal with it, and cope with it, and I felt like I was a mess at the time, and physically, emotionally, um, I wasn't working, it was just a mess, it was just a mess at the time, but looking back, um, I do feel like I learned a lot from, from that, and I, I don't know, I don't know, I think if words were worth something, I feel like without direction in your life, at my age and without having been trained to do anything that you're passionate about to make money um, I think you search for those things and you search for value within yourself and, and, and I know that having gone through what I, what I went through with her with Rachel and watching the way she handled something so terrible at such a young age um, I feel like there's a lot of value there so sometimes I I think about I I wish words were worth were worth something and uh, maybe they are I don't know but you know I post these things on Facebook because I have these I have these really loud aching sentiments that I want, I need to get out, and I don't know where else to get them out, I know that on Facebook that people will be forced to see them, and I don't know if that's the best place for it, but I I have a need to express myself, and I wonder, I just, I'm sure there's a way, but it would require like a lot of focus and, and attention in order to, um, in order to to find the platform or the place for to to talk about uh, what the way she dealt with being sick, and, um, you know, I have a sh- such a short fuse for that. I have a desire to escape and a desire to like these flow activities. I make things, and I think that's um, it's what I. I, uh, I spend most of my time doing is I'll find a flow activity and I let all of the things that I need to do with my life or to, in order to advance and, and find myself in a better position I let those things fall by the wayside um, because it requires focus and attention um, and I'm good at focusing and being attentive to things that I, it's like making things, I know there's a beginning and an end, and there's a something visceral in my hands, like something real, and the, the end product that I can be proud of, and um, so I don't know, maybe there's something to that, knowing that you can wake up and create something, by the end of the day, you can create something that wasn't there. 
before before you know you can you can make something you know with leather or wood you can create you know create something beautiful that wasn't there before you began you can have a thought or an idea in your head and you wake up and you think "Mm, this would be nice and you can take your tools and and go find the material and you can you can whittle out whatever it is you're making um and by the end of the day you can you'll have something you'll have something i'm really good at that um but when it comes to focusing on things i need to do to make my life better i just it's so fucking hard for me it is so hard for me and i don't know why and I think maybe that's it's the flow activity. So when you're doing something flow or you're surfing or you're climbing a mountain or whatever, and you're so focused on what you're doing with your hands and the moment that you don't have to think about the reality of your life. You don't have to think about the future of your life. You don't have to think about things that are very real, um, you know, I don't know if that's the best way to to describe it because there's nothing more real than needing when you're climbing to like reach the next ledge and it's like otherwise you'll fall um you know uh so yeah I don't know I I think that's it though I don't want to focus on the just how bad my life is things like that and I think when you're working on your own life it's like a prolonged look in the mirror Uh, because once I open that can of worms you know I I start tapping into fixing all these things I start realizing how much is wrong and it becomes really overwhelming you know financially all these mistakes I made in the past um, I'm like dug, dug myself deep into a hole and you know, there's things, just little things, like things wrong with my teeth. My teeth decided to, like, rearrange themselves and push outward. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's like changing the shape of my face. And I'm very visual, man, and that's it affects my confidence. And in order to fix that, I don't know what to do. Like, I, I come up against a roadblock. I went to the dentist. They give me a fucking referral to an ortho. I find out my I don't have dental insurance. Math, you know, the, the dental insurance I do, or the health insurance I do have doesn't cover ortho. So there's my roadblock, and then it's done um, for me. And, uh, you know, and little things like that would, would help my, help me feel better on the day to day or the getting a different job or whatever it may be. It just seems very heavy. It just seems very fucking heavy and it's easier to just go and do what your days has scheduled for you. Uh, you know, making phone calls and you know, finding dental insurance, whatever it is, or, like, fucking scheduling interviews, writing a new resume, fucking contacting people, and then showing up, um, it's hard for me, it's hard, working out is easy, sweating is easy for me, but, uh, those things are difficult, um, yeah, I'm going through one of those times where I really miss Rachel, and, um, yeah, so other stresses become really hard for me, you know. Uh, yeah, that's it. I miss her. Uh, yeah. A relationship, like a new relationship, is a fucking... I can't even imagine. Like, my life's too much of a mess to think about a relationship. I'd have to fix so much in order to feel like... Uh, I could add anything to anyone's life, so, but that's it for today, I just felt like recording a quick one, I'm in the car, sorry if the audio sucks, but, um, you know, I'm sure there's people that can identify with what I'm going through, I'm not sure, I don't know, like, the numbers, I don't know how many people have lives that are a mess like mine, um, you know, on so many levels, and, but, I'm sure there are, there are people that are going through worse hardships, and, you know, but 